This is Carson from 3D Joe's. I am knee deep in USS Flag art restoration and I thought it would be cool to do a screen capture of this and show you guys uh, the restoration process. Just give you an idea of, of what I do and uh, hopefully uh, an appreciation for the work that goes into it. So anyway, uh, the USS Flag obviously is a huge document. The one that I'm working on right now, uh, if I go into Photoshop and check the image size, uh, you can get an idea of the, the scale of this thing. It is 43 inches by 30 inches at 300 dpi. Um, this is a massive document. Um, let's look at it in the finder real quick. Close this screen capture out. All right, so I'm working on this document right here, which is close to a gigabyte, uh, 909 megabytes at the moment. Uh, is the document that I'm working on. So how did we get here? Uh, the first thing we did uh, was take a rolled uh, USS flag piece of box art. Somebody got this box back in the day, peeled the artwork off of it, and rolled it up for preservation purposes. Just amazing that somebody had the foresight to do that. Uh, really grateful uh, that they did. Really grateful to Terry Dizzard at YoJo for uh, you know loaning this to me. And uh, super happy about teaming up with Terry to, to make this poster a reality. Um, so first thing I did was take this uh, to a large uh, scanner, uh, about 11 by 17. And I was able to scan the entire document in nine scans. So I have bottom uh, one, two, and three going from left to right. And I have uh, the middle one, two, and three. And then I have top one, two, and three. And just to be safe, I also scanned the right-hand side. I was having some particular trouble with that side because there was a tear um, in the paper. And uh, I was able to work through that. You can actually see the tear um, right about here coming across. So I scanned it a couple times to, to get uh, less reflection uh, in the scan. Once I had those nine scans, I then took it into Photoshop and did a process called stitching which is where you take uh, multiple layers and you can see over here on the right hand side uh, here's the top left, top middle, uh, top right and there here's the middle left, middle middle and middle right and here's the bottom left, bottom middle and bottom right. So you can go through here um, and basically you know one at a time get these things lined up and then uh, you know add the next one and line that up and one thing you'll notice here is that I'm cutting along edge lines uh, to hopefully make as seamless a transition as possible from one scan to the next. I spent a lot of time working to make sure that the transition from one scan to the next is, is uh, seamless or that the seams are not noticeable. So yeah, these are the nine images after I've gone in and done some, uh, you know, some cropping, some rotation, some uh, skewing, warping if I have to. And uh, this gets me to, you know, my workable image where I'm going to start really going in there and uh, color correcting. Uh, a cool thing to do, you can grab all these layers. Uh, let's see, grab all these, take the opacity down, and then you can see where the pieces are overlapping. So that's kind of interesting. I also have an image on my desktop uh, that shows before I went through and cut out all of the uh, various images for the edge to get, you know, to hide the seams basically. Here was what it looked like before I went through and did the uh, selective edges. So these are all the, uh, the nine layers with the transparency turned down to maybe 50%. So you can see how much overlapping there was between the scans. So then once I've got everything stitched together, uh, I'm ready to go in and really dig in there and start doing some, uh, some Photoshop work. So this is where I spend hours upon hours. Uh, once I had the stitching done, um, the other night, I think I started at 6 p.m. and then I went through to 3.30 a.m. It, it was a good nine and a half hour grind. But you can see, um, you know, I started with this image right here. And I'm not going to save that. Here's where we are uh, to date. So I've gone ahead and laid in that old stitch document on top of the new restored document. And you can see kind of a before and after uh, before and after and I'll put up some JPEGs of uh, you know close-ups for before and after so you guys can get a good idea of, of how much work has gone into this uh, to date um, you know just in a couple hours of scanning a couple hours of stitching and then like a nine hour grind of Photoshop work but here's a couple quick um, you know before and after comparisons there's uh, there's after all cleaned up in the explosion background the GI Joe text you can see this diagonal line uh, right here in the middle going across. That was just paperware. 
that's been totally fixed. All this scuffing over here on the left hand side and along the top, obviously all that stuff has to go. There's some wrinkles in the paper. But again, just brilliant that somebody took this, this artwork off the box and uh, rolled it up for later preservation. So you can see, you know, some big wrinkles going across the paper here. A lot of scuffing, you know, just along the hull of the, of the ship and just rubbing. There's some tape right here coming across. Someone had taped it at some point. And then the text, you know, some of the text was uh, actually torn through, not, not preserved. Uh, it's not that the scan didn't capture it all. It's that it wasn't all there from the way it was cut off with the razor. Actually, I don't want to utilize all that text anyway, so I've Photoshopped that out. Uh, you can see where the, the hole's been repaired, all the rubbing's gone. So there's a good look at before and after, and I've gotten rid of some of that text at the bottom and really just kind of simplified this artwork. You know, this is going to be a poster. This is going to be something that you hang on the wall. This isn't something intended to print and put on a cardboard box and try to fake it like it's a real flag box. This is a piece of artwork for you to hang on your wall. Um, so what I have left to do is the uh, Sky Striker, which has some wrinkling going across the middle and some scuffing. And I'm going to get into that later with a time-lapse video and you guys can see uh, how the magic occurs, the, uh, the photo restoration. You might think it's magic, you might not. Magic might be a strong word. But anyway, uh, here's a look at before and after on some, of, some more of the photos of the kids playing with the toys. Those are some lucky kids. I never had one of these growing up. Um, and then some scuffing on the dragonfly and in the water and on the hull. So that stuff's all pretty much done. That's ready to go. So what's left to do is all, all of the deck, basically. You can see you know, that, that deck needs a lot of work there. Um, and I'm going to dig in there, and I'm going to finish that up tonight. And I'm going to do a screen capture and let you guys watch it. So anyway, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this kind of look inside uh, at what I do here um, at 3D Joe's with the, my art restoration project. And again, I just want to say a huge thank you to uh, Terry and Yojo for teaming up with me to uh, provide this piece. This just this is an amazing artifact. The, the idea that somebody cut this off the front of their box, rolled it up, and preserved it for later is just it's just magical. I mean, I have a flag box, and it's nowhere near as good as this one. And I don't think mine would have been salvageable. So. I don't think this uh, this poster would have happened without the uh, team up between Yojo and uh, 3D Joe. So I certainly appreciate uh, Terry and uh, and the guys at Yojo. They do a great job. So anyway, um, I'm going to dig in. I'm going to do a time lapse, and you guys can uh, can watch me finish this thing up. And uh, hopefully, you will have this on your wall by Christmas. Yojo. All right, so I'm back. I just thought as I was going through this that maybe you guys would like me to do a little bit more of a tutorial. So for those of you that like Photoshop, um, enjoy spending some time in Photoshop and want to uh, get better at photo restoration, uh, heck, maybe you're already better than me, but you probably wouldn't be watching this video. Um, anyway, if you wanted some tips and tricks on how to do what I'm doing, uh, I figured I'd go ahead and uh, not just do the screen capture uh, time lapse, but actually show you how to do some of the cleanup tricks that I'm doing right now. Um, so my main tool of choice is the, the clone stamp tool. Um, this is just an amazing tool. And basically what I have to do is, you know, I go through, I quickly scan the document, I find where damages are that I want to repair, and then I have to go about doing one of two things, either using the clone stamp tool to find that pattern, that color, that texture, elsewhere on the document and replace that, uh, use that, um, you know, use that bit of texture, color, whatever from elsewhere on the document uh, to cover up the damaged part. Um, or I go in with a paintbrush and have to basically paint it myself and that's a lot harder. Um, so uh, there's these little bits of digital feedback, uh, as you can see right here, the, uh, the little red circle around the gray. Um, let me zoom in real close on those so you guys can see that. Uh, want to get rid of those. Those are uh, scanning artifacts or printing defects. So I'll go into this uh, clone stamp. I will make it uh, significantly smaller. Uh, I usually use a harder edge because there's patterns in this stuff. 
that you don't want to cause mores by overlapping them with the soft edge. So I basically select a color nearby uh, that looks similar and then go right on top of the thing that you want to cover up. So there was that red circle and now it's gone. Um, all right, so I'm going to zoom out a little bit and I will uh, get to work and kind of talk you guys through what I'm doing, you know, fixing things as I go. And I'll do this for a little bit and then I'll go back to the screen capture and we can see uh, this thing through to its completion. It's about 10.15 right now. We'll see how long this takes. I do not expect to be going to bed anytime soon. All right. So you, you got to find similar colors, similar, similar lines, similar angles. Uh, to basically steal from with this clone tool to replace um, the stuff that you want to fix. So that's what I'll do. The smaller the messed up piece and the more like it's embedded in like these different uh, shades of colors over here, the harder it is to fix. So like we know for instance that this line going through here is a smudge or a marker or something um, unintentional. So I'm going to zoom in there I will actually, um, I'll try the clone tool, grabbing a little bit from right here, carry that back, see if that looks okay. It looks all right, but we know that's supposed to get to white there, so I'm not happy. Um, so I'll use my brush tool. I will uh, hold down the option button, select the color nearby, and we know that's supposed to go to white right there, so I'm just going to cover that in. All right, not happy with that either. So there's nothing wrong with as you go through and do this. If you don't like the results, undo, 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 go back and do it again until you're happy with it, until it looks like you think it's supposed to look. That's, that's the number one lesson here. Make this look believable. Um, I love doing this stuff. I feel like it's uh, long overdue and valuable to the community. I know people want um, the flag as a poster. They've been asking for it for years. And so I'm excited to uh, finally be able to provide that. And uh, you know, I'm excited to have one on my wall. I've got a flag box, but it's not gonna be nearly as nice as this restored piece of artwork when I'm all done with it. So now I feel like that line is pretty much gone. Uh, so you can see before I cleaned up that stuff and then after I cleaned it up, again, there's before and after. So I'm just going to keep bouncing around on this document, um, finding things that I want to fix. There's a lot of uh, scratches, and so I'll select right next to the scratch over here, and then I'll select it. I'll start at the bottom, hold shift, go up to the top, go up to the top. Now that scratch is gone. Look at that difference right there. It's nice. Uh, and this is kind of therapeutic, man. It's, uh, it's a little bit like yoga for some people, I guess, you know, where they say they get into that zone and you know, transport some kind of an out-of-body experience or whatever. When I sit here and do Photoshop work, man, I just feel better. Everything's under control. Everything's cool. So this is my yoga. Let's pull out. And I tend to jump around a little bit. I don't, I don't lose my place too bad. Um, I do a heavy scan of the document. I go in really close and, and totally double check it uh, before I call it done. And I think it helps for me to bounce around a little bit. So sometimes, you know, you get little lines like that red line and it looks like that could be a, a marker scratch, but compos compositionally, it's not helping the artwork. It's not serving a purpose, so I get rid of it. Um, there's some value judgments that have to be made uh, in this process, you know, just to, to see, to determine, you know, is that a scratch or is that, is that damage or was that what the artist intended? And if I don't think it's what the artist intended, then, uh, then I'll get rid of it or clean it up. But I try to never change, you know, compositionally any any major elements of the artwork try to get, get it as true to the intended you know kind of final master piece that uh that these guys created i believe this was still um hector garrido at this time who's an amazing artist uh who was contracted um, hasbro contracted a packaging company and that packaging company contracted 
with Mr. Garrido, and he did all the uh, figure packaging artwork and vehicle packaging artwork for the first several years, uh, maybe up to the first five or six years of G.I. Joe, as well as the uh, Find Your Fate books which have some beautiful covers on them. If you don't have those yet, uh, you can check them out on 3D Joe's, but I encourage you to go out and buy those. Um, let's keep this secondary market for GI Joe stuff um, in demand where it should be. Because it's beautiful and there's nothing like owning the real thing. So go out there and get it. All right, so then if I end up with kind of a color uh, line there that I feel like needs a, a little bit more of a smoother transition, I'll make a larger brush and I'll soften the edge here, um, just, as, just like that. And then I'll come into the darker color and tab it right over the lighter color. And that gives you a smoother edge or a smoother transition from that darker color to that lighter color. All right, so now we're obviously getting into the tires. Uh, we are really well zoomed in, but you know, we can make out the shapes and we know what we're working on. Working on the Sky Striker tires. So a side note about the uh, the old Sky Striker versus the new Sky Striker, which you guys may or may not have noticed, which is really cool, is that the uh, old Sky Striker has the word Sky Striker uh, emblazoned on the tire, which is just, you know, it speaks to the level of detail that these guys were going to are getting into um, back in the day. I just absolutely love that. New Sky Striker is great. Glad they did it. Um, those of you that complain about one seat, uh, come on, guys. I mean, it's based on a one seater in reality. Is, you know, so it's okay that it's a one seater. Let's be happy about our Joes. Let's be glad they're still making them now and then for us. I'm off my soapbox. Happy trees. You might hear my wiener dogs there in the front living room looking out the window for squirrels. So if they see any, you will hear them. Tire's looking pretty good. All right, back up to the missiles. So, I mean, you just go through patiently, uh, little by little, and, um, you know, pan and scan across this document looking for damages, and diligently fix every last one of them. You have the power. You have the responsibility. So, as you can see, I, I don't believe I've even pulled out the brush tool yet. I'm able to find um, nearby colors 
and patterns and uh, using this clone stamp tool I've been able to fix all the damages on this Sky Striker so far and uh, you know again that's the ideal method of cleanup because the paintbrush it just doesn't give you that same texture as cloning from another piece of this document will You know, every now and then I can click back and then click forward in the history and kind of look at what I've fixed whenever I need to take a break and reassess and just make sure everything's moving in the right direction. I review my history. Alright guys, well I'm going to uh, continue with the screen capture so you guys can see this through to the completion and uh, maybe I'll come back online with some more talking points uh, if, if I feel like there's something that would be beneficial to share. But uh, thanks for watching and more than anything, you know, thanks for supporting me and my hobby. I love doing this stuff. It's certainly, I don't do this for a living. I don't do 3D Joes for a living. I do it nights and weekends, you know, like my yoga to... Uh, to help clear my mind and I feel great about doing it and uh, you know you guys' positive feedback really keeps me going All right, so I'm back. I uh, think I'm done with the Sky Striker, uh, which is exciting. Um, so I think I started maybe about 10 o'clock, and uh, now it's 11.30. So um, you can see how the time just melts away. Uh, anyway, so usually the last thing that I do, um, you know, is double check to make sure that I didn't miss any of the details before I move on to somewhere else uh, on this piece of particular box art. So I'll zoom in really close and then I'll just kind of scroll down and check everything. Everything looks pretty good. If I see any last little bit bits that I want to fix then I'll go in and do that at this point. Um, so yeah, scroll down. Now we're to the deck and then I scroll over and scroll back up and just kind of do this uh, up and down moving to the right inspecting really closely to make sure that I haven't missed any um, creases, tears, tape residue, uh, price tag residue, scanning artifacts, any of that kind of stuff. I want this to be as pristine an image as possible because I'm going to print it and uh, you guys are going to have it on your wall, hopefully. So uh, I want to make sure it's as perfect as I can possibly make it. And it's looking good. So far, so good. Ah, that little tail wing right there has some scratches on it that I need to go in there and clean up. So I'll make a mental note of that. Uh, continue scrubbing through. I know I just went down the edge of this wing, and that looks good. 
So I'm just going to clean up this little tail wing and the sky striker will be done. Again, grabbing like a little diagonal line right next to the one that's damaged and cover that up. Uh, same thing here, looking for these same kinds of pin strokes or brush strokes and uh, you know, grabbing it as close next to the damage as possible so that you have the same colors in the gradations. I mean, things are always moving from one color to another uh, when you're painting. There's always a, a mixture there. And so anytime you're clone stamping, you want to grab something as nearby as possible so that you will have consistent gradation. All right, so this looks good. Uh, Sky Striker's done. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, kind of remind myself of what I've done already. So I've done the Sky Striker, uh, I've done the boat, I've done the water, I've done everything around it. What's left is uh, I left a little bit of dirt on the hull here because I think that looks great. Like there's, that might be how the hull originally was. Um, if not, I like that look that this boat's been out there for a while. Um, it's got a little wear and tear on the hull. Um, Dragonfly is good. The hull's good all the way around. That blaster is good. Uh, so what I will do is uh, scan the deck real quick. I know I made it back all the way up to Bazooka. So I need to come in and uh, touch up this Sky Striker. I can see some damages on the tail wing uh, right there. I'm sure there's more. There's lots of damages all around on the ground, ground here. Uh, snake eyes walking by the Sky Striker. That's pretty cool. Uh, Bazooka's driving the little gas truck. Barbecue's just walking along with his axe. Lady J's got her javelin. Uh, shipwreck, once again, driving the boat. Uh, crazy. <laughs> There's several pieces of art from G.I. Joe in the 80s that have Shipwreck um, at the wheel, which is just ironic. Who would put a guy named Shipwreck at the wheel of an aircraft carrier? So I'm going to go in here and, uh, and clean up this deck, and, along with the vehicles and figures, uh, characters that are on it, and uh, that'll be it. So maybe a couple more hours. Uh, you guys can watch that on the time lapse and then I'll come back.
I am back and I believe I'm done which is awesome um, it's almost three in the morning so yeah it took about as long as I expected it would anyway I hope you guys enjoyed watching the time-lapse and seeing a little bit of the process um, behind how I do image restoration so there you can see the sky striker it's all beautiful and uh, we can do a couple before and afters real quick so there's before with a bunch of wrinkles and rubbing and basically just color breaking on the paper so there's some before and after to give you an idea and then uh, I also just got done with the deck Yeah, this is a good look. I mean, there's just a tremendous amount of uh, wrinkling and damages there. So you can see um, what I just got done tonight. Just zooming in a little bit. That's a whole lot of stuff to fix. But uh, it's done. So I'm excited. Uh, this is going to be a 24 inch by 36 inch poster. Um, everybody that signs up for the Yojo Pro subscription, um, the first 50 receive a poster. And uh, also the Collecting the Art of G.I. Joe Volume 2, which features all the artwork from 1984 and 1985, all the painted G.I. Joe artwork from 1984 and 1985. That Kickstarter is going to offer this uh, USS flag box as one poster on 24 by 36 and there'll be a second poster that's the rest of the vehicles from 84 85 so it's going to be an awesome two poster series and uh you know yet another book volume two uh so anyway i hope you guys are as excited about it as i am um this has been a ton of fun and uh again i really appreciate terry dizzard hooking me up with the uh box art so uh, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and yo Joe!